Hi there and welcome to my solar update for September 2024. Uh, so what's been happening this month? Well not a lot really. Um, there has been a couple of free one hour uh, sessions from Octopus which I made the most of uh, while I was at home. Um, but otherwise not much else has happened. The weather has been pretty terrible in September for me. Um, the, the rain in the last week or so of September has been horrific uh, and you'll see that in the graphs uh, in a minute. But before we get into the stats, let's just remind ourselves of my solar panel system. Uh, so 14 Jinko 390 watt panels, uh, totaling 5.4 kilowatts, 10 on the south and four on the east, and a solar edge four kilowatt inverter. So that's the solar side. On the battery side, we've got the three kilowatt AC inverter and the eight kilowatt Gen 1 Give Energy battery. And then of course, I've got a few extra bits and bobs such as the My Energy Eddy heating the hot water, the Harvey and the Hub, and the Hypervolt EV charger. Right, September then. Wow. What a not so great month. Um, I think you can see here from the graph, it had some really good days. Middle of the month, was really good say from the 11th to the 21st of september most days was getting over 20 kilowatt hours there in the middle chunk but the beginning of the month for the first sort of 10 days they were probably only really i don't know three or four five good days out of 10 there were some really bad days and then towards the end of the month it was really bad again just so much rain um and bad weather although some saturdays in the east of england were really hot i mean like burning burning hot on some days as well which you sort of expect in september when the kids gone back to school or university starts you kind of get that september sort of heat coming out but it kind of was really wet as well so the worst day oh god i think it was that day was it far no i mean some days i thought we had less than that to be honest 4.87 uh, it was definitely the lowest, the last day of the month. I was getting a bit confused then because we actually had the 1st of October, I think was literally like 1.8 kilowatt hours. It was so bad and grey and rainy. But yeah, September's lowest was about 4.87. And September's highest day, you can see middle of the month, about 14th of September, 30 kilowatt hours. I mean, wouldn't it be great if every day was like that? Um, so yeah, real mixed bag. Um, so 495.85 kilowatt hours for the month. So we didn't even touch 500, which is a bit, a uh, bit of a shame, really. But never mind. Let's go and have a look at how that compares with previous years. So looking at this month or looking at September compared to last couple of years, um, yeah, 2024 in green. So as I say, 495. But last year, 555. So that's quite a lot of difference, isn't it? Wow. 60 kilowatt hours difference. That's like three really good days in September, really. Uh, and 530, 530 in 2022, 555, 495. So it was a real drop uh, in September this year compared to other years. The worst uh, September so far. Um, and let's hope October's not the worst October so far. Although, as you can see there, um, in October, looking forward, I mean, it was quite a lot lower than 20, uh, 22. It was 476, and I went down to 369 last year. So, oh, God, 369. Let's hope for 400 at least in October. But we'll have to wait and see. While we're on the topic of the panels, let's have a look at the roof and how it splits up for the month of September. So they are starting to, uh, well, there's starting to be a bit of a difference between the south and the east. So the east of the four on the right hand side and obviously the 10 on the south. So on average for the south uh, in September, I was getting 38 kilowatt hours per panel. Fairly similar across all of those. Um, and then on the east, it wasn't quite touching 30, but 29 kilowatt hours each on those as well. Okay, so this is the Hypervolt dashboard for my EV charger. So September wasn't quite as much as August, didn't use quite as much, but 397 kilowatt hours 
uh, across both the cars for the month. Uh, yeah, so 423 in August, so slightly less um, than August. So this is the data for the cars for the month. This is in Home Assistant using the BMW kind of add-on. Uh, so September, the iX3 did 460 miles and the i3 did 1267 miles so overall from the hypervolt we used 398 kilowatt hours um, some of that would have been on those free sessions but i'll just bill those as normal at 7p overnight rate so the total mileage for both cars was 1727 miles and 398 times 7p is 27 pounds and 86 pence for all those miles for both cars which gives us an average of 1.6 pence per mile. And we were doing about 4.3 miles per kilowatt hour. So that's not too bad. So this is the My Energy Eddy, which I used to heat the hot water overnight and sometimes uh, top up during the day. I know some of you said, why are you using solar again in the day to top it up? You're better off using gas and exporting instead. So I'll try to start doing that a bit more now. Uh, probably not the best time of year to start doing that because the solar export is becoming less and less, especially on these really dark rainy days, such as the ones we've been having at the end of September. Um, but basically the big peaks here are the overnight heating on the 7p rate on Octopus Intelligent for the water. And then um, sometimes smaller peaks during the day when some solar has crept in. Although, as you can probably see, on the second half of or the last week or so of September, you don't see the um, rest of the day peaks. So basically, I've let it heat up during the day and then I've kind of switched it off. So you see the big gaps uh, between the larger peaks, whereas for the rest of the three weeks of the month, you can see smaller peaks in between the large peaks, which is where the solar was kicking in. So I've tried to stop that. Um, as much as possible now and kind of export as much as possible which i did try in september even though the uh, the weather was rubbish um and so i probably wasn't exporting that much anyway on those really bad solar generation days in the last week of september but overall 170.2 kilowatt hours uh, went in the eddy um for the month it's also worth noting this month in october on octopus uh flexible on the gas it's gone up to 6p it was about five something uh, per kilowatt hour on gas it's now gone up to six so it's quite close to the 7p rate of the electric um, on octopus intelligent although i believe the gas tracker is still around 5p a kilowatt hour so uh, we'll look at that a bit later on in the video um, about the gas prices and i'll mention that but at the moment um I think previously I did kind of turn off the eddy a little bit over the winter and just use the gas um, to heat the hot water. Um, I, I don't know if there's much in it, to be honest. I'd have to work it out all again. So on to Octopus then. So this is the new uh, kind of dashboard um, for looking at your kind of stats on your usage uh, within Octopus. I've only seen it for the last day or so. I don't mind it too much, actually. Um, the only change I would make on here is that it says show standing charge, which is great, which is this is white line at the bottom, which is your fixed daily charge, um, which you can tick off. But the issue is I would like to see this price change as well, whereas the price is kind of fixed. So I'd like to see the price with and without what I'd used with and without the standing charge. But otherwise, it's not too bad. You can change it back to kilowatt hours or you can move it on to costs. I'm really only interested in the cost, to be honest. So this is how much electricity uh, we used for September, 75 pounds and 12 pence overall. Uh, when we come onto the numbers, I'll break that down to, uh, to the night rate and the day peak rate. Um, we had a bit of a peak there, didn't we? I must've gone on a long trip or something, charged the car up quite a lot that day, uh, mid month. Actually, I know what it was now. It was having that free hour. We went crazy and used a lot of electricity on that day. So moving on to the year then, I did try and uh, change it over with costings, but it didn't like it because I haven't got a full year on this. And I've got zero kilowatt hours going up the left-hand side here, which is interesting. So there's still a few uh, little bugs in here. 
Um, so September 874 kilowatt hours, uh, slightly up on August. So this is the export for the month. So 51 pounds and 42 pence for the export. Uh, obviously that's probably a bit down on last month, but we'll have a look at the figures um, in a minute. So if I switch that back to kilowatt hours, 342.933 kilowatt hours exported for the month. Um, it kind of really does mirror what comes in on my solar edge graphs to what actually goes out as I try and export um, as much as possible. So for the month of September, as I said, 342, way down on August. I mean, look at August, 500 kilowatt hours was exported, um, 342 in September. That's a real big difference. So let's have a quick look at the gas then. I didn't hardly use any gas. We haven't put the heating on yet, although I did put it on last night for an hour, hour or so just to check it was working all right. So for the whole month of September, £8.88 pence. But as you can probably work out, most of that is standing charge. So if I tick off the standing charge, boop, you'll see uh, what I actually used. So 45p there and a little bit, uh, the odd part of a pence there. So most of it was standing charge for September. So I just wanted to show you the Give Energy dashboard. I haven't been using this much, actually. I think since I've been using Home Assistant with loads of uh, Give Energy plugins and things in that, I haven't really been looking at the Give Energy dashboard. I used to use it all the time for looking at solar predictions and things like that, but I haven't been doing that so much. So in here, basically, this is the uh, export. Uh, generally for the whole month of September. In yellow, it's the solar. In the uh, blue, it's where I exported the battery um, in the evening for what was left over, sort of trying to predict what I needed till 11.30 until it went cheap again on Octopus Intelligent. So you can see here that most of the month, there was a fair bit of solar export, although there was the odd day when there was basically none. Uh, but I still managed to sort of export a little bit out of the battery, but not very much. I mean, on that day, on the 5th of September, I kind of only got out 1.82 kilowatt hours out. Uh, and look at that terrible day on the 22nd. There was literally nothing um, went out the door. Very little on the last day of the month as well. But it kind of does add up a little bit uh, if you can get to export um, from the battery. As you can see here via the pie chart, it was actually um, 76.2 uh, kilowatt hours that actually went from the battery to the grid. So, you know, if I do quick sums, 76 times uh, 15p, it's 11 pounds and 40 pence. So, I mean, it's it's okay, isn't it? I mean, it's 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 better than nothing. Um, obviously, you're not going to get that all year round because of the change in the weather. But if you get six months of that, then you are kind of looking at £65 um, around that for the year. So it's kind of worth doing. So I just wanted to show you that anyway. Although you've got to remember, you're probably not getting uh, all of that as profit because you probably paid 7p overnight to put it in. So you're actually only getting 8p per kilowatt hour that you actually sort of export back to the grid. And just to show you how it kind of varies, so 76 in September, if I go back a month uh, to August, it was 87, so a little bit more. You see the pie chart move, 70 in July, June, it was 68, May, it was 86, and April, it was 83, 56 in March. I'm expecting it to go really low now. God, it was 30, yeah, it was 34, even though the pie chart's getting bigger, the actual the full amount is less, 34 in Feb uh, and 26 in January. So you can see there, if you added that up, it would be a little bit of money uh, during the year uh, that you can export from your battery if you're not using it. Okay, let's go through some numbers then for September. So for the grid import uh, on the cheap rate of Octopus Intelligent, we imported 819 kilowatt hours at seven pence. That equaled 57 pounds and 35 pence for the month. Uh, for the day rate was 55.7 kilowatt hours at 24 pence. Uh, that equaled 13 pounds and 59 pence. The reason for that was the couple of one hour free sessions uh, where we made the most of that. 
uh, and the export 342 kilowatt hours in uh, September, although August, as you can see, was 500. So it was quite a lot more in August. But the 342 times the 15 pence rate uh, on Octopus again for export is 51 pounds and 43 pence. For the gas in September, uh, 1st of September to the 30th, we used uh, 9 kilowatt hours at 5.4 pence. That equaled 50 pence. Uh, and the, well, actually just say that that price has gone up now in October. We've all had a little price uh, increase. That was on Octopus um, Flexible. That's now 6, just over 6 pence uh, per kilowatt hour. Uh, and the gas tracker for the East, uh, for me, uh, for the average price in September, I did have a look at it again. It was 4.72 pence, although I have just had a look at it again. And I know that the normal rate has gone up to over six pence for the gas, but the uh, gas tracker price has gone up a fair bit as well. It's kind of sitting around the five pence rate, just over the five pence per kilowatt hour rate as well. So I haven't moved to this yet. I'm just trying to see what the price uh, is going to do if it's going to kind of sit really close to what the, the uh, flexible price is. Um, and I was looking back at some history graphs to see if the tracker price has ever gone over um, the kind of standard price. And it has for the odd month. And I'll probably do a separate video about that just to look at the history of the gas tracker and if it's worth switching to. It kind of is. As I don't see a problem, although the cap, the maximum price they can charge is 30 pence a kilowatt hour, which is absolutely massive. Uh, but I don't think it's ever reached that. Uh, but you never know what's happening in the world and what could trigger um, kind of price hikes in the gas. So for the standing charges, the gas is now, well, it was in September. It's now just gone up again in October, but it was 28.95 uh, pence a day in the east for me. For 30 days, it's £8.69 for the month. And the electric in September was 47.85 pence a day times 30 days, uh, which equals 14 pounds and 36 pence. So then overall, so the gas we use 50p uh, plus the standing charge of 869 gives us nine pounds and 19 pence for the month. And the electric's a little bit more complicated. We used 70 pounds and 94 pence plus the standing charge of 14 pounds and 36, but minus the export, which was 51 pounds and 43 pence, and then minus those two uh, free one hour sessions we had, uh, minus six pounds 36 equals 27 pounds and 51 pence for the month of September for electric. Not too bad. Um, don't forget of that 70 pounds and 94 pence, 27.86 went in the EV. So we, you know, we powered both the cars for the month. Um, and in the Eddy was eight pounds and 90 pence overnight on cheap rate. And then obviously the six pound 36 from the free hours came off that price as well. So in total for both 36 pounds and 70 pence for the month for both the gas and electricity for the house. Uh, if we didn't have the EVs, then I think the electric would be about zero. And if we didn't have a teenager who took 30 minute showers, then the eddy price would be a lot lower as well. Right, that's it. Thanks for watching. Nearly 20 minutes. I don't want to go into 20 minutes. That is far too long for this sort of video. Uh, if you did make it all the way to the end, well done. Uh, don't forget to leave your comments below. Tell me how your system got on in September. Was it as bad as mine? Was the weather as bad where you are as it was where I am? Uh, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not a subscriber and I'll see you soon.